Hello class, welcome back. Today we're going to go ahead and move on to module E, right? Specifically, we're going to be looking at sections 3.8, 4.9, and 4.1. And in section 3.8, right, this is going to be section in page 309 in our book, all right? 309 in our book, uh, Implicit Differentiation. All right, so, so we've learned a few rules already, right? We've learned the power rule the quotient rule, the product rule, and the extension of the power rule, right, which is the chain rule. All right, um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we are going to continue deriving functions, right? We're going to go ahead and continue deriving functions, but now our functions are gonna have, there's gonna be more Y variables involved, okay? There are gonna be more Y variables involved, all right? And as a recap, all right, um, we said if you were given a function Y, all right, let's just something simple, all right, 3x to the fourth, all right, we know that the derivative of this, right, we will notate as y prime is equal to 12x to the third, all right, and one thing I had mentioned was the y prime is the same thing as saying dy over dx, all right, and this came from the fact that we derived y with respect to x, all right, so one thing that I need us to, to really do in this section, right, to be on the lookout for, or something that you need to do, is when it, you're going to derive x normally, like you normally would, but now whenever you see y, you're going to derive y, but after you take the y derivative, you're going to go ahead and write y prime right next to it right, stating that, hey, you multiply with, right, you took the derivative of y with respects to x. So what, what am I talking about, right? What am I talking about? So let's just say that you had something, let's go ahead and do something simple, right? Uh, let's do y squared plus 3x squared is equal to 1, all right? 5x squared, there we go, all right? So that means, right, there's a y here, right? I'm going to derive this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and derive that, meaning this here is following the same rules, is gonna be two y, but times, you. every time you derive y, you're going to multiply it by y prime, okay? And you may use y prime, you'll notice that the book uses dy dx, right? Um, you can use either one of those, right? But you'll see me using y prime. Plus 10x is equal to zero. All right. And if you notice, most of the time we're always we're always solving for y prime or for dy dx, right? So after you do this, what you need to go ahead and do now is get y prime by itself, right? Get get the derivative by itself. So in other words, this is your focus. You want to go ahead and focus on that. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and subtract, right? I'm going to go ahead and subtract by 10x. 2y times y prime is equal to negative 10x. And last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2y. Right, so y prime is equal to uh, negative 10x over 2y. In other words, negative 5x over y. Right. That is my derivative. In other words, this is my slope, right? This is, right, this is my slope, right? For that, for this, for this function, right? Let's go ahead and do another one, right? Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's say, all right, you had uh, 3y to the fourth plus 2x to the third is equal to 5x minus 3, All right? Okay, I'm going to start from left to right. Okay, I'm going to derive this, right? I'm just going to go, 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 going to go ahead and derive that. It's going to be 12y to the third, all right? Plus 6x squared is equal to the derivative of this is just 5. The derivative of 3, that is just a, uh, a coefficient, a constant, that is going to be 0. All right. Oh, it, right. Of course. You see, I can't believe I forgot. Let's go ahead and move this here. Times y prime. All right. Times y prime. 
right? Let's go ahead and move that 6x to the other side, 6x squared. This is going to be 12y cubed times y prime is equal to 5 minus 6x squared. Right. And last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and multiply, divide everything by 12y cubed. All right. So in other words, y prime, my derivative for that function is 5 minus 6x squared all over 12y cubed. All right. And that's what I have. And this here would be my, my, my answer, right? This here would be my answer. All right, so, right, and you may get situations, you may be, you may get in, you may get in situations where you may have to apply the product rule, right? You may have to apply the product rule. All right, so let's go ahead and find a few of these examples, all right? Let's just say my next example, right? Let's just say that I'm for this example, I'm asking for find the slope of the tangent line to the curve. And let's just say, right, I'm going to make them bigger. To the curve, what is the curve I'm looking at, right? What is the function I'm looking at? This function is going to be. Um, we'll say negative x squared minus 3xy minus 3x, no, 3y cubed equal to negative 15 at the point, at the point of negative 3, 2. Okay. So in other words, I need to find a slope at, at this specific point. All right. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and get the derivative. All right. That is going to be negative 2x, right? Ah, but I need us to be careful here, all right? Here, I have an x and a y multiplying each other, all right? So whenever you have two variables multiplying each other, we need to apply what? We're going to go ahead and apply product rule. And yes, you may use product rule or chain rule or quotient rule whenever you're doing implicit differentiation, right? Um, so I'm going to say my f is going to be negative 3x. My g is going to be just y, all right? Uh, the derivative of negative 3x is negative 3. The derivative of y is just 1 times its y prime, or in other words, just y prime, right? Y prime. Right, and applying product rule to this, all right? In case, let's go ahead and write product rule. All right, so it's going to be G, all right? So plus G, all right, times F prime, negative three, plus F. times g prime, right, which is what's the y prime, right? I'm going to go ahead and move on to this next one. The derivative of this is negative 9y squared times y prime, right, is equal to 0, right? So all I'm doing is just deriving things normally, right? Um, but I need to go ahead and apply... Um, uh, I need to go ahead and multiply by y prime, right? So let me go ahead and polish this up, right? Uh, cleaning this up, we should get negative 2x minus 3y minus 3x times y prime minus 9y squared times y prime is equal to zero. So one thing you may be asking, hey, um, there's two y primes, what do I do, All right? So what you want to go ahead and do here in the, this next step is get y prime by itself. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get y primes. I'm going to keep my y primes to the left, and I'm going to go ahead and move everything else to the right, meaning this here is going to stay, and this here is going to stay as well, All right? Meaning I'm going to add 2x to both sides, and I'm also going to add, add 3y to both sides, right? I'm going to go ahead and move those out of the way, All right? Meaning on the left-hand side, I get negative 3x y prime minus 9y squared times y prime 
equals 2x plus 3y, all right? What you want to go ahead and do then when you have all your y primes on one side is what? All right, what we want to go ahead and do is factor, all right? We want to go ahead and factor. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a y prime from both, from both of them, meaning I'm left with in the inside negative 3x minus 9y squared is equal to 2x plus 3y. And last but not least, right, I have two things multiplying each other. I got this and I got this entire piece. I want y prime by itself. So that means I'm going to divide everything by this. All of that meaning that my derivative, my slope, right? Because that's all the derivative is, right? The derivative is just the slope of that function is 2x plus 3y all over negative 3x minus 9y squared, all right? Uh, but if you notice that the question wanted me to find the exact slope, right? So this slope here is for any point in this function, right? Any point of in this function, right? But I don't want it at any point. There's a specific point where I want it, all right? That, mean, that point was given to me, all right? That point right there stated x is equal to negative 3 when y is equal to 2. Meaning, all you really have to do is plug that in and let's see what my slope is, right? So my slope, which is just y, y prime at that point, would be 2 times negative 3 plus 3 times 2 all over negative 3 uh, times negative 3 minus 9, um, 2 squared, right? In the top, right, let's go ahead and do this. On the top, I get um, negative six plus six. Ah, all right, negative six plus six over uh, negative nine minus nine times four, right? This gives me minus 36. Oh, this should be positive, right? Negative times negative is positive, meaning on the top, I get zero over. All right, uh, what is that? Nine minus 36, that ends up giving me negative 27 and zero divided by anything is just zero, All right? So my slope here is just zero, all right? I may ask you something else, right? I'm, what if I had asked you, give me the equation of the line, all right? The equation of the line, does that, does that sound familiar, right? Give me, find the equation of the, or the, find the equation of the tangent line, all right, uh, right? Yes, and that, that, that does sound familiar, all right? If you remember from our previous math courses, right, to find the equation of the line, it is y, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, all right? Where y1 and x1 are the points that are given to you, all right? All right? So in other words, my x1 is going to be that negative 3, and my y1 is going to be that 2, all right? So all I would go ahead and do here is plug in everything that I know, right? Uh, these points were given to me and I just found my slope, right? So this is y minus y1, which is two, is equal to zero times x minus negative three, meaning this is y minus two is equal to zero times x plus three, and anything times zero is just zero, right? So y minus two equals zero, meaning y is equal to 2 is the equation of, right, that there would be the equation of the tangent line. All right, so the only thing that's really changing here, right, is finding the derivative, right, finding that slope, all right? These, these, these equations are getting a little bit more complicated, right, a little bit more complex, right? So we're using calculus to go ahead and find the slope, all right, at, at that specific point. Go ahead and do another one, all right? Um, so we, we said we can go ahead and do it, right? There's a case where we can go ahead and do, excuse me, where we can go ahead and apply product rule, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and do another one, all right? Let's just say that we have, all right, let me go ahead. If my function is, Square root of x plus square root of y is equal to seven. 
and y of 4 is equal to 25, all right, find uh, y prime at 4. All right, uh, let me go ahead and focus on this top part, right? This, what does that mean? Y of four equals 25. All that means is, all right, all, all that means is when X, when X is equal to four, my Y equals 25. All right. Uh, that, that, that's all it means, right? Uh, that's all it's saying, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is right get my function and write the find the derivative, right? Well, my, my function is here, right? My equation is there. Um, let me go ahead and rewrite that, right? This is x to the one over two plus y to the one over two is equal to seven. I'm going to go ahead and take those derivatives, right? Um, so this is going to be one over two x to the one over two minus one plus one over two y to the one minus one minus one times y prime is equal to zero, right? Every time you're deriving y, you need to you know, write y prime. You need to go ahead and write, write y prime, all right? So, and we know that, right, one minus one over two minus one is the same thing as one over two minus two over two, which is just negative one over two, all right? Meaning, all right, meaning this is just one over two x to the negative one over two plus one over two y to the negative one over two times y prime is equal to zero, all right? Um, one thing I may want to do here is multiply everything by a two, all right? So I can go, go ahead and get rid of those denominators, right? That's my lowest common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by two and that by two and this and by two as well, right? Which gives me x to the negative one half plus y to the negative one half times y prime is equals to zero. I want to go ahead and solve for y prime, right? Meaning everything attached to y prime is gonna be one of the last things I'm gonna go ahead and divide by. Meaning that x to the negative one half has to go, right? So I'm going to subtract both sides by that. Meaning I'm going to be left with y to the negative one half times y prime is equal to negative x to the negative one half. All right, and then finally I can go ahead and divide by y to the negative one half, all right? meaning y prime is just a uh, negative x to the negative one over two over y to the negative one over two. All right, one, one thing that we had mentioned before, right, was that if you had x to a negative, uh, to a negative exponent, this is just one over x squared, right? And similarly, right, if you have one over x to the negative exponent, it moves to the top, right? So this is just uh, x to the third, right? To the third. So in other words, the one on the top wants to be in the bottom to become positive, and the one on the bottom needs to go to the top to become positive, right? Meaning this is just negative y to the one half over x to the one half, which is just negative square root of y over square root of x, right? Over square root of x, right? And right, since I already solved for y prime, since I already solved for my slope, right, this is just um, y prime is equal to negative square root of y over square root of x, right? Um, I was giving conditions in the beginning, right, to solve for y prime whenever x equals this and whenever y equals that, meaning that my slope at those points, right, is negative square root of 25 over square root of 4 which is negative five over four, right? So negative five over four will go ahead and be my um, my derivative, right? It'll be my derivative. All right, let's go ahead and do another example, right? It's gonna be my derivative at, that, at those specific points, all right, at those specific points. All right, let me go ahead and bring this problem in here, right? I wanted to go ahead and introduce a, a, a math problem. Well, of course, a math problem, a word problem is what I meant, right? A word problem is what I meant. Let's go ahead and introduce this one here. Oh, no. Okay. 
So what are the word problems you may encounter, right? Is the volume of a right uh, circular cone of radius X and the height of Y is given by this formula, right? So I'm told, right, that the volume of a circular cone with a X radius and a height of Y, right, um, is this. So in other words, V is equal to one over three times Y, right? Suppose that the volume of the cone is 25 pi centimeters cubed, all right? So that's my volume, all right? Uh, find dy dx when x equals five and y equals three, all right? So let's go ahead and write down what we have, all right? Let me go ahead and write everything down. and I'm told I need to find y prime, right? So uh, of course, right, this is a calculus class. Oh, and real quick, right? When in doubt, take the derivative, right? This is a calculus class, all right? So when in doubt, take the derivative, all right? So, all right, one thing I want to go ahead and do first, right, is get things in terms of, uh, of get, get things in terms of x and y, right? And get things in terms of, of x and y. Right, meaning mm -hmm, that V is cool and all, but I really don't want it there. And that's great, right? Because I can go, I, I know what V is. V is just 25 pi, right? So 25 pi is equal to one over three y x squared uh, y. And last but not least, right, what I may want to go ahead and do here is, um, right, at, at this point, since everything is in terms of x and y, you could go ahead and you could go ahead and just apply product rule here right off the back, all right? So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do, right? That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So from left to right, the derivative of this, right, is just zero, all right? So the derivative of this is just zero equals, hmm, this here would be my F, this here would be my G, all right? So I would say, right, if f is equal to one over three pi x squared, my f prime, right, that'll be what? Two pi over three x, g is y, and we know that, right? g prime is then just y prime, all right? Meaning if I apply product rule, let's go ahead and move this right over here, right? If I go ahead and apply product rule, right, which is, All right, g times the derivative of the first plus the first times the derivative of the second, right? Let's go ahead and get, get this here. All right, this is what I have. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So this is zero is equal to two y, two pi over three x y plus pi over three x squared y prime, right? And of course, I'm trying to go ahead and solve for y prime, right? So I'm gonna move this whole piece to the other side, or I'm gonna subtract both sides by this, right? Meaning I have negative two pi over three x y is equal to pi over three x squared y prime, right? Go ahead and get rid of this. That. All right, let me go ahead and move this here. Um, if the left equals the right, then it must be that the right equals the x, this is the left, right? So I'm only going to go ahead and just rewrite this, right? All right. And last but not least, I want to go ahead and uh, probably multiply everything by three, right? Because I do not want any uh, common, uh, I don't want any denominators, right? So we're gonna multiply this by three to get rid of my fractions. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this by three and we find out that these threes cancel out. So I'm left with pi x squared y prime is equal to two pi x y, right? And last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by this. Ooh, right, 
the y prime is equal to 2 pi xy over pi x squared. Right, I can go ahead and keep simplifying this, right? But I right, my pi's are gonna cancel out. Um, I have one x on top and two at the bottom, meaning I'm only gonna have one at the bottom, meaning that my derivative for that function for the volume of 25 pi, right, is two y over x. All right. If you want to go ahead and find out, right, what um what it is, right? You're giving your x and y, so I'll let you go ahead and plug that in, right? I'll let you go ahead and plug that in, right, to see what it gives us. But yeah, they're very nice. All right. I'll go ahead and mention one more thing all right i'll go ahead and mention one more thing to prepare you for one of the other problems right if you have a box all right if you go ahead and have a box all right let's go ahead and draw this box like this all right, and if you want to go ahead and visualize this right you can go ahead and get any you know any amazon boxes or anything you may have in your house all right Right, anything that's a box box shape, right? To go ahead and see like a box. Of, I see here a box of macaronis right, right, right by me. Um, or like a box of training pads for pets, right? I see one of those. So any box to help you visualize it, right? Um, there's going to be a problem where you're told that you're dealing with a rectangular box, right? That has a square base with side X, right? So in other words, this is X, this is X, all right? And that it's height H. All right, so I'm sorry, it's height is y, right? So in other words, from here to here, it's it's y, all right? And you need to find an equation for the surface area of the rectangular box, all right? So, so surface area, right? You're just getting the surface area of each side, all right? You're just getting the surface area of each side, all right? And to get the area of an object, right? When you're it's, when it's uh, rectangular or squared, it's just one side times the other, all right? So one thing I want to go ahead and do here is focus on the top of the box and the bottom of the box, right? The bottom of the box, right? So for the top of the box, right? It is from this side, right? It is, right, that is length times width, right? Or, or right length times right you want to know the area of the box is this times this right well both of those sides are x's right so one of the sides is going to be x times x right which is x squared right so this is going to be for my top All right, what about the bottom it's going to be the same thing right so including the top and the bottom on my box it's going to be x squared plus x squared right which is what x squared okay i'm gonna save this all right so this is the surface area for the top and the bottom of the box all right now that i'm going to be looking at the the, the faces of the box all right the, the long side right so in other words this end here and this end here all right so and right whenever we're dealing with a with that right i'm told that the side is still x all right but the height is y Right. So in, in other words, the, the area for that side of the box is going to be uh, 8 times y, right? Is that a, a, right? Is x times y, right? Is x times y. And, right, and how many of those do I have, right? If you, if you go ahead and look at, at the box, right, that's y, you have four of those sides, right? So in other words, you're going to have the other one like that, another one like that, another one like that, meaning those sides you have four of those all right so if you want to know the complete surface area of the box right you could say the surface area with respect to x and y right is equal to four um you can say right two uh, x squared plus four x y all right that'll be it all right and you can just leave it as s is equal to two x squared plus 4xy, right? It's just like that volume problem that we had, all right? Um, where's my volume problem, all right? It's just, um, you're just, uh, the parentheses inside just says what type of variables I'm allowed to plug in, all right? So 
my volume was this. I or I also could have could have seen it like this: f with x and y that are allowed to be plugged in, one over three pi x squared y, right? And all right, for so for part A of that problem, it'll be hey, find that, right? And how would you go about the next part, right? How would you go ahead and, and find the derivative? Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a hint. It's going to be very similar to the volume box that you found, right? Uh, the, you're right, well, you had to plug in something for s, all right, and which is given. So I'll go ahead and let you go from there. And of course, right, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate, you know, to, to, um, um, to let me know, right? And last but not least, right, so let's just say that I have, I want you to derive this, right? I want you to use the implicit differentiation to, to write this. Take the derivative of this, right? Okay, cool. So, well, right, what we'd have to go ahead and do here is chain rule, right? That comes to the front, right? So this is going to be four times. I'm going to copy down exactly what is on the inside. Right? This is x squared plus y squared to the two minus one. So that's going to be just the power of one times, right? The derivative of the inside, right? The derivative of the inside, right? So then this here is going to be two x plus two y times y prime. And let's just say this was equal to zero, this is equal to zero, right? And you might be asking, oh, how do I get, um, how do we get y prime out of there, right? Well, how, well, what you do here, right, is you can go ahead and get this entire piece, right, and distribute it into here and into here. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, right, that whenever you're dealing with y prime, whenever you're trying to solve for y prime, um, if you have parentheses like these, you know, that were created whenever you derived, um, you want to get rid of them, right? So you want to go ahead and distribute where you can, right, to go ahead and get rid of these, these, uh, these parentheses, right? So in other words, right, when I do my first distribution, that is going to be a x times x squared plus y squared. Um, plus 8y times y prime times x squared plus y squared equals zero, right? Right, your goal is to get y prime by itself, meaning anything that's multiplied by it, right, can wait until the very end to divide, meaning you're going to want to go ahead and subtract both sides by the entire chunk, right? You don't want this here, right? So you move that, right, you go ahead and subtract it by all that, meaning I get 8y times y prime times x squared plus y squared is equal to negative 8x, x squared plus y squared, Oof, right? And last but not least, right, I'm, I'm, since I only want y prime by itself, I would go ahead and divide both sides by 8y, uh, x squared plus y squared. You go ahead and derive that by, divide that by both sides, meaning you get, um, y prime, your slope for that function is negative 8x squared plus y squared over 8y times x squared plus y squared, All right? The, the cool thing here, right? What's going on? All right, the, the cool thing here, right, is this can cancel out with this. <laughs> And this can cancel out with this, right? Meaning your derivative for that function is just negative x over y. Ta-da. All right. That is your derivative for that function, right? That is the derivative for that function. So. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and move forward um, to exponential. Right, taking the derivative of exponential functions and logarithmic functions, right? And again, please use your, your cheat sheet formula, all right? The one I went ahead and provided. Let me go ahead and pull it up, all right? So what of the other rules, right, that we're going to be dealing with uh, is going to be taking the derivatives of logarithmic and exponential functions, all right? So I'll go ahead and go over one first. All right, let me go ahead and get it here. Go ahead and pull it up for everybody. Right on your cheat sheet, you'll see it right here on the far left side under trig, right, right there, these here. Uh, specifically, log logarithms and exponential functions. Right, um, exponential when it's e, 
right? Raised to an exponent, raised to a variable. Whenever you have a number, right? Let's just say like five raised to a variable, all right? Those are going to be the exponentials I'm going to be looking at, right? So let's go ahead and do a few examples of those, all right? Um, well, we'll keep it simple, right? And right here, we're not using implicit differentiation, but right for these examples, but in this section 3.9, you may be asked, right, to apply implicit differentiation into what we already know, all right? And what's going to be very helpful here is applying our logarithm rules, right? Our log rules of how to combine and lay out uh, logarithms, right? Depending on what's inside the, the parentheses. And we'll go over those, right? We'll definitely go over those uh, as a refresher, right? Or as a warm up. Um, so one of the first things I'll say is the whenever you have a function, right? E to the X, right? The derivative of this function is going to be itself times the derivative of the exponent, right? Of what's on top on the variable, all right? Um, which in other words, it's one, all right? So one thing you wanted to know that the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, right? The second derivative is just e to the x, right? It remains e to the x, all right? So even if you had like y equals negative, let's say seven e to the x, all right, so well, you know, when you take the derivative, you can write out the, the, the coefficient, right? And then just take the derivative of this, right? Well, that is just e to the x, all right? Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's change it up. Let's just say that you now have y is equal to e to the 2x, all right? So like we said, the derivative is itself times the derivative of the top. Right, what is the derivative of 2x? That's just two, All right? And cleaning this up, this is just going to be two e to the two x. That is your derivative, right? If you were finding your second derivative, right? It is itself times the derivative of the top, which is two. Meaning your second derivative would be four e to the two x, right? Four e to the two x. Right, four e to the two x. All right, let's just say, right, let's go ahead and step it up a bit, right? Um, let's just say you needed to use chain rule, right? So you have y is equal to five e to the five x to the fourth plus seven x to the seventh. It's like, ah, oh, professor, that's a big jump, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So, so um, if I can show you the extreme cases, right? Um, Right, whenever it comes to it, you'll be fine. Right, you 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 do great. Right, because I'm. I'll ask you something not as hard as this. Right, or at most as that hard. Right, it's not even hard; just challenging. Right, so we said to take the derivative of an exponential function. It's just going to be itself. Times the derivative of the top. I need to find out that the derivative of the top is 20x to the third plus 49x to the sixth, right? And you can leave it like that, right? I'm not going to go ahead and ask you, right, to go, hey, go ahead and derive again. No, no, that's fine, all right? We'll, we'll leave it at that, all right? We'll go ahead and leave it at that, all right? Let's go ahead and do some more. Let's just say we had some product rule ones, right? So this was here, uh, applications with chain rule, right? Um, let's go ahead and do one with if... Ooh, let's see. What, what do we want? Let's go ahead and do... We'll do x to the fifth times e, let's say, to the 3x. Right? Something like this, you would have to apply product rule, right? Because you have two terms that are multiplying right and each one has a variable x right so here we'd go ahead and go ahead and apply product rule all right by now we should be very used to uh, applying product rule right which would be e to the 3x times the derivative of f plus f times the derivative of g right Meaning my derivative would just be 5x to the fourth 
to the 3x plus um, 3x to the fifth e to the 3x, right? Whenever you're deriving the, um, whenever you're deriving, right, and you're organizing these, generally you want the exponentials at the very end, all right? So again, right, you may get some of these with, um, whether you have to do quotient rule or chain rule, right, or any of the other little rules that, that, that we saw before, right? Um, Right, so let's just say you had something like g of x is equal to negative 2e raised to the square root of negative 10x plus 12. Whoa, all right, step at a time, right? Step at a time. So one thing I would do, right, is to write my function, right? This is just negative 2e to the negative 10x plus 12 raised to the one half. All right, so the derivative of this E function, exponential function is just itself times the derivative of the top, right? And one thing we had mentioned before, right, it, it is if you want to go ahead and write this out on the side, then please do, right? Whatever helps you I'll solve these, right? And right, so if this is, we can say f, right? If this is just a function, derive that, right? And you'd find out this gives me one over two, negative 10 x plus 12, uh, one half minus one, you find out this gives me negative one half. Hey, but you can apply even another rule here, right? The, oh, here's chain rule times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 10, right? And I'll let you check that this is just here. This is just going to be negative five, negative 10 X plus 12 to the negative one half, right? In other words, so this here would go here, negative five, times negative 10 x plus 12 raised to the negative one half, right? Since this is multiplying with this, is multiplying with this, and that last part, right? And negative two times negative 10, right? That is just 10, right? This is going to be e to the negative 10 x plus 12 to the one half times negative 10 x plus 12 to the negative one half, um, I don't want that negative exponent, right? So this here is going to be 10 e to the negative 10 x plus 12 to the one half over negative 10 x plus 12 to the positive one half, right? And last but not least, right? You do not want all these one halves, right? You would just turn everything with a one half into a square root, all right? Go ahead and turn all of those into a square root. So very, very nice. Give me a second here. Okay, let's go ahead and do so. Right now, right, we, we've we've seen the applications of the exponential functions. All right. So let's just say that I asked you to take the derivative of y is equal now to a number a variable, all right? A number raised to a variable, all right? So this here, right? This here is just going to be the natural log of that base, which is seven times itself, all right? Uh, another, uh, another way that the students like to look at this is, right, is y prime is just itself times the natural log of that base, right? You may be asking, hey, all right, why doesn't that rule apply to e to the x? If e is just a number, right, just like pi, right? E is just a number, and it does, right? And it does, right? So if I were to, to follow those rules, right, it is y prime is equal to, right, let's just say natural log of the base times itself, and hey, this is an identity, right? What is natural log of e? That's just one, right? So in other words, y prime is just equal to e to the x. Right. Let's go ahead and do one more example with these, right? So you have y is equal to seven. I don't know what we're going to do. Two x third, right? Ooh, so we got two raised to the x raised to the third, right? So. All right, so we said one thing we're going to do is go ahead and do y prime is equal to natural log of the base 
times itself. And is that it? No, right? We're going to go ahead and go even further. Times the derivative of the top, right? Let's not forget that. So the derivative of the top would be 3x squared, right? And cleaning this up, now you may leave it like that. I'll go ahead and let you leave it like that, right? But if you wanted to, right, you could say 3 times natural log of 2 times x squared times 2x to the third, right? We're going to go ahead and learn some some logarithms, right? Right, the the natural log, all right? We're going to go ahead and look at the derivative for some natural logs, right? One thing that I wanted us to go ahead and look at is remember our log rules, right? Let's remember our log rules. Get the log, all right? Um, go ahead and get this instead. The log of let's just say third plus the log of z to the seventh, all right? So you can combine these under one log, right? You can combine these. So this here is just the log of those two things, but multiplied, all right? This here was known as the, the product rule of logarithms, right? Where you can go back and forth between these, right? There was another one stating, right, that you had the log of 3 over x, right? This is the log of 3 minus the log of the bottom one, right? This here, here was the quotient property, right, of logarithms. And the other one, right, was log of x squared, right? This was the power property. Right? We can bring that log that variable to the, the exponent to the front, meaning these two are the same as this. And this is gonna become very handy with this section whenever we're, we're dealing with logarithms, right? We know that logs have bases as well, right? Log base three of x, um, x z. This is just log three of x plus log three of z, right? All right, um, so let's get familiar with these. Um, in case you're wondering, whenever log has the base e, right, we generally don't use that, right? There's another name for this. Uh, this is what's known as the natural log of x, all right? So in other words, the natural logs and the logs have the same rules, right, when it comes to, um, for the most part, whenever they're deriving, right, with the exception of one, uh, whenever you're deriving, and, um, and they have the same properties up here, right? The product pro property, the quotient property, and the power property, right? So logs and natural logs have that same, uh, they both follow those same rules, right? So let's look at natural logs, right? If I ask you to take the natural log of x, right? This is just going to be one over whatever is on the inside of those parentheses times the derivative of what was inside the parent, all right? So the general identity for natural log is this, all right? Meaning if I gave you y is equal to um, natural log of 3x, right? The derivative of this would be one over whatever's on the inside times the derivative of the inside, right? The derivative of the inside would just be three which is three over three X, and it just here happens to be one over X, All right? But don't get too comfortable with thinking that, hey, a few of these ends up being one over X, it's always gonna be like that. It's not always gonna be like that, right? And you'll, and you'll see an example here, All right? I'm asking you find the derivative of natural log of six X plus five, All right? Well, we know that the derivative is just going to be one over whatever's on the inside times the derivative of the inside, which is six, meaning that my derivative is just six over six. All right. I want to go ahead and go over some other properties as well. 
right? So let's just say I had asked you to find the natural log of, uh, let's use six x minus three, or we'll say plus four is equal to three, right? And I asked you, hey, I want you to solve for x, all right? Here, this is going to be a warm up of algebraic, all right? Of, of our algebraic, um, of some algebraic properties, all right? So let's go ahead and get started with those. All right, so you're, you're trying to solve for x, right? You're, you're here trying to solve for x, but you realize that the natural log has that, that, that variable you need trapped in the inside, all right? It has it locked in there, all right? So one thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to raise everything to the e power, the left and the right, all right? I'm going to pick everything up, right, with a base e. Uh, the reason I want to go ahead and do that, right, is because e raised to the natural log, that cancels out, right? This ends up leaving me, and then boom, 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 this comes down, right? This leaves me with 6x plus 4 is equal to e raised to the 3, right? And then, hey, guess what? e to the 3 is just, it's just a number. It's a very specific number, but at the end of the day, it's still just a number. So you're going to treat it as such, meaning you're going to solve for x. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract both sides by 4. This gives me 6x is equal to e to the 3 minus 4. And last but not least, you're going to divide by 6, right? Meaning x is equal to e to the 3 minus 4 all over 6. All right. All right, so that's another thing I wanted to go ahead and cover. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and take the derivative of natural log of six. Um, no, no, let's see here. Give me one second. I think we've done enough of these natural logs, right? Um, give me one second. Let's go ahead and apply some logarithm once, right? Let's go ahead and apply some, some logarithm um, functions. So. Right, we're going to go ahead and look at negative five. Oh, well, you know, let's go ahead and do a basic one. Right? Let's go ahead and do a basic one. All right, so you want to know what the log of base three of x is. All right, the derivative of this, right? So here, what's a little bit different is that the log changes now, right? The the um uh, the base changes now, right? So this is still going to be one over whatever is in the inside, which is x, times the natural log of that this base. That's what you, your derivative would be, right? That there's what your derivative would be, All right? So let's go ahead and, and do another serious one, right? Let's go ahead and step it up. All right, so let's just say here that I give you, hey, you have y is equal to log base, I don't know, 13 x cubed plus 6. Ooh, there's a lot of things going on, right? So, okay, step by step. Y prime is equal to 1 over what's on the inside times the natural log of that base. And it's important here, make sure to write these parentheses out, right? times the natural log of the base, is that it? No, times the derivative of the inside, right? Which is three. Meaning my derivative is three x squared over x cubed plus six times natural log of three. Right. Let's go ahead and do another one. All right, so let's just say, let's step it up, right? Let's just say you had y is equal to log base 21 of x raised to the fifth, All right? And like what I said, right, you have to go ahead and, and be careful with, um, you need to go ahead and be careful with, sorry, um, would not be careful, just remember, if you need to go ahead and use previous rules, then we have to, right? 
So I'm trying to get to this log of base 21, but there's a five over it in parentheses on the outside. Hey, I know this is gonna be chain rule, right? So my derivative here would be five times log of 21 x raised to the fourth times the derivative of the inside, All right? So the derivative of log of 21 x, that's just going to be one over x times the natural log of that base. Right, meaning when I polish this up, right, this here should be five log twenty-one of x raised to the fourth all over x natural log of twenty-one. All right. Okay. Now in this section, we're going to apply what's known as, so, so the previous section, there was emphasis on implicit differentiation, right? If you see a y and you're deriving, you write y prime, all right? When implicit differentiation, this is known as implicit, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Uh, with implicit differentiation, there we go, all right? You're gonna have to do this Whenever you realize, whenever you go ahead and realize that, wait, what you, uh, my base isn't a number. This is a variable. It's a variable raised to a variable. How do I derive that, right? How do I derive that, right? Where do I start? What's right with logarithmic differentiation, what you need to go ahead and do is use the power rule. Right, we said that the log of x squared is, is the same thing as two log of x, right? And the same thing applies, right? If you're dealing with natural logs, right? It's just the same thing, right? They, they follow the same rule, right? They go ahead and follow the same rule. So with implicit differentiation, what you want to go ahead and do is take the natural log of both sides, right? You want to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides, which is going to give me the natural log of y, is equal to the natural log of x raised to the 5x, right? And the reason I want to do that, it's because I can bring that variable down, right? I can go ahead and bring that variable down, right? So this here ends up being natural log of y is equal to 5x times natural log of x. And ha, that, ver that exponent is down, meaning I have something with an x multiplying with something with an x. Hey, I can apply product rule, right? I can go ahead and apply product rule. But you also need to be careful, right? Because implicit differentiation comes into play here, all right? Implicit differentiation comes into play, all right? So we have natural log of y, all right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do to derive this, right? Let's start on the far left, right? It's y, but it still follows the same rules, right? Uh, the same differentiation rules. We just need to remember that whenever you derive y, you multiply it by y prime, right? So the, net, the, the derivative of natural log of y is one divided by what's on the inside times the derivative of the inside, right? Which is just one times y prime, right? Is equal to, right? I'm gonna go ahead and apply the product rule for these two, right? which is going to be natural log of x times the derivative of f, which is five, plus f times the derivative of natural log of x, which is an identity, which is just one over x. All right, let me go ahead and polish this up. This here is y prime over y is equal to natural log of five natural log of x plus five x over x, right? That just cancels out, leaving me with just five times one, which is five, all right? I'm trying to solve for y prime, all right? I'm trying to solve for y prime. So I don't want that y there, right? I don't need this y. So I'm gonna divide, I'm gonna multiply both sides by y, right? So in other words, y prime is equal to y times five times natural log of x, plus five, right? And you're not gonna wanna leave it like this, right? What is y? What is y? 
right? Oh, that was that's that's what was at the very very beginning. Why is the same thing as x to the five x? Meaning you're gonna want to rewrite this, right? So in other words, your final answer is going to be y prime is equal to x to the five x times five times natural log of x plus five. Right, this here would go ahead and be your final answer. All right, so you, you're going to want to do this, the same step, right? Whenever you have, let's just say, um, y equals, right? It might be something like 2x raised to the sine of 4x, all right? Right, you have two things with x's. One is the base and one is the variable. You do not want this, all right? I'll go ahead and get you started on this, right? This here would be natural log of y. Go ahead and show your work. I skipped a few steps, but you should have sine of 4x times natural log of 2x, right? You're going to go ahead and do the same thing, right? The same thing. You would here have to go ahead and do product rule for both of these, right? Uh, same, same steps, right? So go ahead and, and you get um, same, same steps, right? Right. This here is known as implicit, oh, not implicit, logarithmic differentiation, right? Logarithmic differentiation. Right. This here is known as logarithmic differentiation. Even if you had something like, let's just say y is equal to 7x times uh, raised to the natural log of x. Again, right? Don't let that natural log, don't let that natural log of x throw you off, right? Don't let that x. It, it, at the end of the day, it's still just a a, a very. It's a function up there, right? It, it, it's something that has an x in the base. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take the natural log of both sides. Just trust the numbers, right? Trust the rules. All right. What ends up happening? That natural log, which is an x, right, which is an exponent, comes to the front. You have natural log of y is equal to natural log of x times natural log of 7x. All right. I know I have to apply product rule here. All right. So the one on the left is going to be 1 over y times y prime is equal to g times the derivative of f plus f. Times the derivative of g. Right? When you clean this up, right, I will should have here uh, y prime over y is equal to natural log of 7x over x plus natural log of x all over x, right, because these sevens cancel out. I would multiply both sides by y because I need to get y prime by itself. So this is y times natural log of 7x over x plus natural log of x over x and then you would and you know what y is right you would go ahead and plug in that entire piece there right so my final final answer would be um y prime is equal to 7x to the natural log of x times natural log of 7x over x plus natural log of x over x. Woo, right? Step by step, right? We're using all the points, right? We're using all the points. Uh, we're using all the um, all the rules we've learned before, right? So know your the derivative for sine, for cosine, and so forth, right? You need to go ahead and know all of them, right? You need to go ahead and all know all of them, right? Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Right, it's going to be section 4.1 related rates. Right, in other words, we're dealing with word, word, word problems. Right, we're dealing with word problems. Right, so okay, so for, for this section, right, we're going to go ahead and apply what we've been going over before, right, which was implicit differentiation. Right, so for example, if you were deriving y, right, you would have to write y prime, right. So, and one thing I wanted to go ahead and mention is please know the, the areas for circles, right? If you don't know this here, and please know the area of a triangle, which is here, all right? Um, if, in case you forget for the area of the triangle, right? I know that the area of a square is base times height, right? And here's my, my squared, right? And if you notice, a triangle cut diagonally, a squared cut diagonally is just a triangle. It's in other words, it is just half 
a triangle is just half of the squared, meaning now you see why the area of a triangle is base times height over two, because it's just half, it's just half the area of a, a, a square, right? So, right, let's go ahead and go ahead and bring in some problems here, right? So we, that we can go ahead and work together, work on together. All right, so, all right, a word problem here, right, would be, there we go. Right, let A be the area of a circle with radius R. If dr over dt, right, the derivative of R with respect to t equals five, of equals five, find that the uh, derivative of A over t, right, the derivative of A with respect to t, where R equals one, right, or R equals one. Meaning, right, since it's respect to time, right, if it says it's respect to time and none of these, that time variable isn't here, that means at the end of that, at the end of A, whenever I'm deriving A, whenever I'm deriving R, I'm gonna write R prime or uh, A prime, right? So in other words, dr over dt, right? I would write it as R prime, just the same way dy over dx, I was using Y prime, right? And the derivative of A over dt, right? I'm gonna take the, uh, signify this as A prime, right? So let me go ahead and write out what I have, right? Um, uh, I'm told R prime equals five, right? R prime equals five, what else am I told, right? R prime equals five and A prime, A prime is equal to, oh, that's the one I gotta find, right? And my R is equal to one, all right? Let me go ahead and get the area of the circle, which is a is equal to pi r squared. All right. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is now derive with respects to, to t, but t isn't there. That means I'm still going to go ahead and derive these, but at the end of all of these, I'm going to multiply them by a prime or r prime, right? So the derivative of a, right, it's just one a, right? And it's and it's just one. So the derivative of this is going to be a prime is equal to the derivative of r squared is going to be 2 pi r times r prime, right? All right. And the reason I'm writing primes for all of these, right, it's because um, I'm there, I need to go ahead and derive these with respect to t, but t isn't there, right? T is, t is not there. They are not t's, right? Meaning that uh, I need to solve for a, which a is by itself, uh, meaning I get to plug in something for five and I get to plug in something for, for I, get, I get to plug in something for R prime and for R, right? Meaning that the derivative of A with respects to time is two pi times one times five, right? Which ends up being 10 pi, All right? Ends up being 10 pi, All right? So let's go ahead and, and do these, all right? With these respects to time ones, right? There's gonna be a few of these. All right, let's go ahead and see what other example I can choose. This example states, the altitude of a triangle, all right? The altitude of a triangle is increasing at a rate of 1.5 centimeters per minute, while the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate 2.5. At what rate is the base of the triangle changing when the altitude is this amount and the area is that amount? There's a lot of information going on, all right? So one thing I, I first need to go ahead and know is that I'm dealing with a triangle, right? I know that going in, all right? And I know the formula for my triangle, right? We said the area for the triangle is base times height over two, right? Base times height over two. And let's see what they give me. Um, the altitude of the triangle is increasing. So my rate of change for height or H prime is 1.5. All right, and I know that because they're telling me it's increasing at a rate, right? That is a rate centimeters, cent, cent, <laughs> centimeters, centimeters per minute, right? That's a rate of change, right? If they just said, hey, your rate is just, the, the value is just, uh, sub, it, it's just um, like centimeters, right? I know that's just a distance, right? Centimeters is just distance. Centimeters squared would be area, right? Rate of change would be centimeters per minute, right? Or per second, 
right? So I know eventually I have to derive all of these with respects to T, right? So, okay, so I was saying H prime is that. I also know that the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate, right? Right, so I know A prime is going to be 2.5. Right. At what rate if the base uh, at what rate is the base of the triangle changing when the altitude is 9.5 right uh, so I need to find B prime is what I need to find right I need to go ahead and find B prime uh, at what rate is the volume of the triangle changing when the altitude is so in other words my H is 9.5 and my area is 90. All right, let's see. They gave me area, a, they gave me A, A prime, they gave me H, H prime, they gave me, I don't know what B is. I, I don't know what B is. But I can solve for B from here. All right. I can solve B from here. All right. So if I'm looking at A is equal to base times height over two, right, I will multiply both sides by two. So I get 2A is equal to base times height. Divide both sides by h, meaning b is equal to 2a over h. And I know what a and h are, right? a is 90, right? So this is 2 times 90 over height, which is 9.5, all right? 9.5, meaning my base, right, is 2 times two times 90 divided by 9.5, meaning that my base is approximately uh, 18.9. So we'll say it's 19, right? We'll go ahead and round up 19. So let's go ahead and solve for this, right? This is A is equal to base times height over two, right? And of course, right, when in doubt, you take the derivative. Right, when in doubt, to take the derivative. Go ahead and move that over. Um, right, let me go ahead and move things even further, right? I'm going to say this is just, uh, this is A is equal to one over two times base times height. Aha, I need to go ahead and apply product rule here, right? But remember, we're doing implicit differentiation, right? Right, since we're deriving with respects to, to time. Right, so in other words, this is going to be a prime is equal to one over two, right? Over two, or oh, is equal to, well, it depends, right? You want to go, if you want this to be your F, you could go ahead and have that to be your G. It is G times F prime, which is one over two times B prime, plus one over two B times h prime right cleaning this up all right i get a prime is equal to one over two h times b prime plus one over two base times h prime all right let me go ahead and plug in everything they gave me all right everything they gave me i know eventually i have to find i have to solve for b prime all right so let me go ahead and everything they plug in everything they gave me. They gave me 2.5 is equal to 1 over 2 height, which is 9.5 times B prime, which I don't know, plus 1 over 2 base. I know my base. Oh, yeah, that right. So in case you're wondering, how did I know that I needed to solve base in the very beginning? Right? You didn't, right? You could you could have gone ahead and gone this far and, be, and been like, hey, I don't have an equation for B. Oh, that means I have to solve it using the area uh, function, right? The area area formula. Right? But we already went ahead and did that. That was 19 times H prime, which is 1.5. Right? I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by 2. So I can go ahead and get rid of these, these denominators, right? So I'm going to multiply this by 2, that by 2, that by 2, meaning I'm going to get 5 is equal to 9.5b prime, right, plus 19. I clean this up even further. I get, right, let me move what's on the left to the right and run the right to the left. I get 9.5b prime plus, what is 19 times 1.5? 
right? This is 28.5, five, right? I'm gonna go ahead and subtract both sides by 28.5, 28.5, right? So five minus 28.5. This is 9.5b squared is equal to negative 23.5, right? I mean, dividing by 9.5, I get, right, this here ends up giving me approximately negative 2.47. Uh, one thing I wanted to go ahead and mention is if your rate of change is, if your rate of change is positive, Right. If your change of rate is positive, it means that change rate of change is increasing. Right. It's increasing. If your rate of change is um, if your rate of change is negative, that means it's decreasing as well. Right. So in other words, um, right. Since they told me that the rate of change for the height for the altitude was increasing, I wrote them down as positive. Right. I wrote them down as positive. And right, in other words, if it was decreasing, I would have written them, I would have written it down as negative, right? I would have gone ahead and written it down as negative, right? Meaning, let's go ahead and do an example. Right, we have this problem here. A spherical snowball is melted in such a way that its radius is decreasing, all right? So, all right, we're dealing here, if you read the question, we're dealing with the volume of a sphere. So I know that is four over three pi r cubed, all right? I'm told that the spherical snowball is melting in such a way that its radius is decreasing. So my rate of, right, my radius is decreasing out of rate. All right, so since that is rate of change, this is r prime, right, is equal to negative 0 0.1 since it's decreasing, right? At what rate is the volume of the snowball decreasing when the radius is 12 centimeters, right? When the radius is 12 centimeters, all right? Meaning that since the volume of the snowball is decreasing, that means my V prime must be negative, right? My V prime must be negative. Uh, and just like before, right, what, what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is, um, right, all of these are deriving with respects to time, right? And how do I know that, right? It's over time, this rate, these rates are changing, right? Over time, these rates are changing. Uh, what else was given to me? I'm sorry, radius is also given to me. All right, my radius is 12. All right. Um, ignore this part here. This, uh, the, the value, sh I believe sh that should be, if it's decreasing, that should be negative, right? I'm not sure why it's there. I'll go ahead and get that fixed. So, right, in other words, I'm going to derive these with respects to time, meaning if I do not derive the variable T, which is which represents time, I need to go ahead and derive and write V prime or R prime at the end of all of these, right? Meaning this is just V prime is equal to four pi over three times the derivative of this, which is three R squared times R prime, all right? Meaning, these two cancel out, leaving me with v prime is equal to four pi r squared times r prime. All right, at this point, hey, at this point I can go ahead and solve for volume, right? I can go ahead and solve for v prime. I can plug in everything that I know, All right? So v prime is equal to four pi, what's r squared? Uh, this is 12 squared times r prime which is negative 0 0.1, right? Go ahead and plug all that in. Uh, yeah, the dominant um, uh, sign is negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and just multiply all of these together, right? So four times pi, well, Realize my calculator doesn't have it, right? If you realize that your calculator doesn't have a pi, you can locate it. Uh, you can use 3.14, right? So times 3.14 times 12 squared, that is 144. 
times 0.1, all right, I end up getting negative, running up to the whole neighbor's whole number, I get negative 181. Uh, and these are centimeters cubes over minutes. Um, I know it's this rate is changing with respect to minutes, and right, the rate for volume, right, is uh, cubed, right? Volume is cubed, so very nice, right? This is my, my rate of change. I know this was decreasing because it's it's negative, right? It's gonna have been negative, right? And these are gonna be all the problems I have for you now for 4.1, right? It's very helpful to to know the formulas of um, to, to know the formulas of right volume or area, right? Whenever you're dealing with these, right? Or triangle, you're gonna see a few triangles. So of course, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask and I'll be more than happy to, to help you. And thank you very much for your time and hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.